earlier this week uh, from Australia, Senator Carl Godwin uh, arrived in the country, joined camp after getting approval from World Rugby uh, to switch uh, to Zimbabwe, his country of birth. Uh, he joins me in studio along with exciting winger Edward uh, Sagalke. He was part of that uh, Africa Cup winning side, uh, recently graduating from the Junior Sables and now part of the senior setup. Kyle, uh, Edward, good morning and uh, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Thanks uh, for having us. I hope I didn't uh, disrupt your training programs or anything. No, no. We're going to no, get no, in no. trouble with just, the coach. Just Eddie sleeping. <laughs> 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 He's usually only up at about 9 o'clock. Oh, oh, so this is still, you yeah, still busy. Pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kyle, yeah. I'll, I'll start with you. First of all, I'll, I think it's been, what, more than 20 years since yeah. you've been in uh, Zim. You were born here in Harare, but... You know, spent most of your time in Australia. Uh, you've had a, you flew on Tuesday, Wednesday, was it? Uh, fl flew out of uh, France on Monday and yeah. arrived here Tuesday evening. Yeah. And I've been part of the squad ever since then. Uh, uh, what's, I know it's just been a couple of days. What's that experience been like uh, coming it's back been great. home? It's yeah. great. It's, it's funny. It's just like you had these memories of a kid of Zim because I left 24 years ago as a uh, seven or eight year old. And I, I, re I remember a few things, but they, they seem to be a lot smaller than I remember, if you know what I mean. I <laughs> yeah. went and visited my old home and I, yeah. shit, I thought I was living in a mansion, yeah. but um, it's, 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 it was great. You know, everything, great memories, but um, everything is just a little bit smaller than what I remember. And obviously, you know, a big step for you, uh, uh, switching from Australia to Zim. How have you been welcomed by the boys and Pete Bernard and the technical team and all that? Uh, no, they've been so, super welcoming. Uh, Hilti, the boys, um, Pete and the, and, the, and the staff have been awesome. Uh, they've been so welcoming. And the wider Zimbabwe community, I know there's a lot of excitement about Zimbabwe rugby at the moment and the boys did a great job in the Africa Cup this year and, you know, there's a huge motivation and like, a, and that was a part of the reason why I wanted to come back and play for Zimbabwe. You know, obviously it's my birth country, but they've got this really goal and drive to go and play and play in the World Cup and get back on that world stage, you know, and we've got this opportunity to build again here for this tour. And then obviously uh, if we win the Africa Cup next year, you know, the boys are going to Australia and visiting my home country. Eddie's already asking me about all the nightclubs. And the, the, the he's already, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. got the plug for yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, Eddie, yeah. obviously, uh, you've been with the Shaxx Academy in uh, South Africa. Yeah. You were part of that successful Junior Sable side yeah. uh, that won the Barbers Trophy. Didn't quite uh, happen uh, this yeah. year, but then. Yeah, you got to make up for it by yeah. graduating uh, to the senior team, uh, got that famous win against Namibia, and then went on uh, to uh, lift the Rugby Africa Cup. I mean, yeah. it seems like a lot's been happening for yeah. you. Like, how you've been soaking it all in uh, and this, what has been a busy 2024 for you? Yeah, it's been a big year so far for me. I've played a lot of rugby, so obviously it's taken a toll on the body, but I'm enjoying every, every bit of it. Uh, I think, obviously, moving from the junior stables was a bit hard. You know, but having the right players around you, the right senior players, Hilton, the boys, always is good for, for my growth. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot happening throughout the year, but always enjoying the journey, yeah. And I know there's also a lot of excitement around you. I mean, a lot of hype yeah. around what you can do in terms of your movement, your speed. Uh, you know, have you felt any pressure around that? Because, I mean, you go on social media, there's yeah. clips training of you going past players. Does that come as pressure or that drives you to even want to be better? I mean, it is a lot of pressure. It is, I uh, <coughs> always, <like to, coughs> always like to remind everyone I'm still just uh, a normal boy. But uh, yeah, it helps me. It helps me to keep going. Uh, obviously knowing there's, a, there's like a lot of hype around me and a big following, it always helps me to keep going and to always make sure that I perform, yeah. And obviously, the, <coughs> you've just wrapped up your first season with the Shaxx Academy. Yeah. Like, what has that experience been like for you in terms of your growth and development as a player? No, that, that's been very good for me. Like, having coaches like JP there, like players who've played for the Springboks, having the right people around me helped me to grow, uh, helped me to understand the differences in levels of the rugby and where I need to, to be uh, to, to keep going and getting better. So, obviously, that's been good for my growth. It has gotten difficult at times, but that's where I, I felt like I've learned the most and, have, uh, and managed to grow, yeah. All right, Kyle, uh, you, you obviously you've had a few days to interact with the boys. Uh, before we even talk about that interaction and what it's been like in camp, you know, from the outside looking in as somebody obviously uh, who ha was rooted here in Zimbabwe but had the privilege to play uh, Super Rugby in Australia, I think more than 100 caps that you had with Western Force <coughs> and the different outfits there, then going to France. What has been your assessment of where Zimbabwe rugby has been, especially over the last couple of years? 
Um, you know, obviously, like I said before, there's just like there's a lot of energy around Zimbabwe rugby, and Zimbabwe wanted to do well and get back on that world stage. Um, so uh, I had my first training session back. So I obviously finished up in France around June. So I had my first training session back with the boys yesterday, and wow, I've got some athletes. I've got, <laughs> I've got a tough task. I think my nickname already is uh, Elephant and Shona, which is the old, <laughs> old fat and slow. So I'm in trouble. But um, no, in, in all seriousness, you know, the quality of rugby player, yeah, I was very impressed yesterday, and I've been impressed by the boys. You know in the gym yesterday you know look at Eddie man he's a he's a fast young kid coming through you know and there's uh, some some quality quality players there you know and for the right training right coaching um you know that you know the world is the opportunity you're gonna have the next beast coming through or the next Todd Ray Stravanga coming through you know so it's 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 really great or the next Dave Pocock you know um yeah there's some quality players uh, and, and I want to speak about, obviously, uh, you've been playing Super Rugby for over a decade, then went to France, yeah. you were capped by Australia, but uh, I want to talk about the conversations that happened where you were convinced uh, to then say, you know what, you can come home, you can be part of the Sabre setup, yeah. and you can be part of this uh, journey to try and make it to the World Cup. When did those conversations start, and you know, who were some of the key figures to convince you to say, you know what, uh, Kyle, I know you're enjoying life in France, and <laughs> you want to go back to Perth or whatever, but you know, when did this conversation start primarily and what was it that got you to say, you know what, let me go and be part of the Sables? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a kind of few years in the making. Um, it actually, funnily enough, it started as a conversation when my, myself, Ian Pryor and David Pocock uh, were still playing in Australia. We actually spoke, it was like, one day we want to go back and play for Zim. You know, um, obviously Poe, like I said last night on one of the shows, that he, he's, he's very busy with politics at the moment and he's a bit, he's a bit, bit in the dollar. Um, yeah. But Ian, oh, he, 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 he makes you look young. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I look like a young guy compared to him. But um, yeah, Ian and I, we, we, we spoke about it and we said well, that was one of, our, one of our goals and, you know, it's to play international rugby and be a part of something, you know, it's my, my African origins, my Zimbabwe origins, you know, they, they, they mean a lot to me. And to come back and play for the team, you know, and do everything that I possibly can, you know, I, was, I had, the, like you said, the privilege of playing in Australia, playing in Ireland, playing in France, you know, I got exposed to so many different ways of rugby, got exposed to so many different coaches, so I've just had to be able to, the privilege of learning so much about the game, and I would, like, I would love to come back, and the old elephant would like to pass on a bit of wisdom to the young bucks. No, elephants, uh, they've got a long memory, they, yeah, they've got they, a they, they memory, never forget yes. they're not, they're, not, not, they're not a dumb animal, so <laughs> watch out for the elephant. And I want to talk about Ian, because uh, uh, Ian, you said you guys played uh, together, this was at the Western Force, right? Yes, correct, yeah. yeah. And obviously he was part of uh, the Sables earlier this year when they went to the Africa Cup. You know, in terms of his influence after that, he, he, you know, he came back and played with the Sables. Did you have any conversations with him in terms of the reality? Because it's a different thing to dream about, oh, you know, to be sitting in Perth yeah. and talking about coming back home and then have somebody who's actually come back and then had that experience, maybe talk us through that as well. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, Ian and I were talking about before, I, I was touching goes also with joining the boys uh, for the African Cup. Uh, obviously I couldn't work, I, I, got, I was getting married and I had to work. Oh, make congr- sure. congratulations. Happy wife, happy life, they say. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I had a few other priorities at the time, but um, Ian said he absolutely loved it. I uh, loved being a part of the, the group. It's, you know, and I've experienced it for the last few days and it's, it's a great group of boys, you know. They're, Good fun. They already know where all the pranksters are. I've got to watch out. <laughs> Eddie's rooming with Brandon and Brandon. One yeah. Brandon's extremely quiet. The other Brandon is the So joker. it's fun times yeah, again. Yeah, great, yeah, great, yeah. great fun. As I, Eddie, I, I remember, I think, oh, one of my memories from that Rugby Africa Cup, I think there was a cross kick from Ian and you yeah. sort of dashed into the try box and you got there and you, you managed to get a try for yeah. the Sables. I mean, having players of that caliber who've played at the highest level, you're still, you know, making your way from junior rugby into the academy sides, having the likes of Ian come in, especially at that uh, Rugby Africa Cup, what was that like for you, especially uh, as a fellow, a back, you know, having someone with that experience? No, I think that added to my cup a lot because as a young player, you sort of want the freedom to to express yourself, but you don't want to keep yourself in your shell. But they always reminded me to, like, just do what I can and get out of my shell, do exactly what I always do. I think Ian, Mafura, Hilton, they always help to remind me, like, keep talking, keep stay in the game and just do what you, you, you're here for a reason to so do exactly that. So having Ian there, even more experience. He always talked to you, he was always in my ear. So even that cross kick, you told me the week before you could have called it. So <laughs> I, I had to call it the next year, yeah. but he was going to be on me. So, yeah, it, having that experience there for me, I think it really helps me a lot in, in the setup right now, yeah. 
Oh, and obviously you've had now a few days to interact and work with the elephant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a cow come, yeah. coming through. I'm sure uh, growing yeah. up and having gone through the system of rugby, you would have watched him, you yeah. know, playing super rugby and, you know, making a name for himself. What has it been like, you know, to actually interact with them? Maybe just realize that it's a regular guy like you, he's a fellow Zimbo. And you know, what are some of the things that you, you're hoping to, to learn from him as he becomes part of the setup? Nah, there's always a lot to learn. Like uh, yesterday, it, well, I'm trying to teach him something. I was yeah. trying to teach him a new handshake, but um, I think having the experience at centre when I'm at wing is very good for me because he gets to talk to me. He's always in my ear. So even yesterday at practice, we're like on the same team for like the scrimmages. So it's always good to have someone of his calibre, understanding that he's been you know at the levels that I want to get to, and it's always good to have him in my ear and keep talking to me. So I think that will help me a lot now. Yeah. All right. Uh, most people who remember you from Super Rugby, we haven't seen you in a couple of years when you've been in France uh, yeah. and all that. But in terms of uh, Maybe for viewers, what do you think, you know, besides the wisdom, like on the field of play, what do you think you can still bring uh, to, to the Sables? Uh, yeah, for me, uh, like uh, a lot of my game is like I'm a, uh, I'm a talking, distributing kind of centre. So I want to make sure, like I think Ian provided a lot of that conversation mm -hmm. and communication. So, you know, just a, just a bit of an older, wise head on the, on the field. And hopefully I still have the legs to make a few tackle <laughs> breaks as well. But um, we've got some big, powerful centres, so I've got my work cut out for me. But... No, I just want to bring a bit of a calming influence on the boys and, you know, just to provide a bit of direction around the field and attack and defence and just be that voice and, yeah, just, you yeah, know. So, like I said, a bit of that and a few passes, a few carries and a few tackles. <laughs> and make sure I don't miss my tackles or Pete will be up for me. Yeah. Yeah. Pete, Coach Pete will be on me, so I just got to make sure I make all my tackles. And how, how's that uh, experience working under a Coach Peach and uh, the technical team as well? No, they've been excellent. They've been excellent. We've been very impressed with them. We had a, we had a, an initial um, defence meeting and uh, us all over it. We're very excited by the way that um, Kenna wants the team to defend. And then, yeah, Pete's been excellent as well. Uh, he's welcomed me in and he's been great with... Um, providing me with the information that I need to, how the Sables want to play and the core DNA of the team. And a lot of it revolves around getting it to our powerful players, the, the, the likes of Eddie on the wing and letting them do their thing and do their natural speed and skill on the, on the edge and scoring some tries. And obviously uh, there's that uh, tour of the UAE and South Korea coming up. Uh, that's part of a larger plan for us to try and qualify uh, for the 2027 World Cup in Australia, yeah. <laughs> a place you're very familiar with. Yeah. But I think we we're almost, it's been more than a, uh, three decades, almost 30 years since we've been to, uh, to a World Cup. How important is, I mean, you talked about those conversations you had with uh, Paul Cock and Pryor. How important is it, do you think, for Zimbabwe and maybe the young players as well to maybe to stay motivated for us to be able to go to the World Cup and play at uh, the, that level and what do you think we need to do to get there? Well, I think, every, I think we've, got, we've already got the right people in the place to do that. You know, we've got a great coaching staff. We've got a lot of people who are interested in Zimbabwe rugby and a lot of people doing great things for Zimbabwe rugby. Um, and the, the way the coaches have approached this, you know, we, we did great at the, the Africa Cup. Um, we're building more momentum now with this, this, this NVS series, like not, not many other African teams will be doing that at the moment. So this builds another momentum, building more cohesion amongst the team. And then that just provides us again, like more, co more cohesion, uh, growing our game. So hopefully come next year at the Africa Cup, you know, we're, we're a better team than we were that we won it when, when they won it. So, you know, no, I think the way Zim is going about rugby at the moment is excellent and they're doing all the right things. And, you know, now, now, now it's up to the players in the field to make sure we get, get the job done. All right. Uh, uh, Edward, obviously, uh, you're one of the younger players and there's quite a few young and exciting players uh, in that uh, setup. You know, how important is it for you guys, you know, having the support and the experience of uh, the Hiltons, uh, the Carls, uh, the Ians, and all the different guys who've been part of that set setup, Coach Pip Benardi as well, mm -hmm. in terms of then uh, wanting to qualify for uh, the World Cup, you know, what was the conversation like, especially uh, on a touch of that win against Namibia, because if you, if you look back at mm -hmm. the history of our attempts in the past to try and qualify for the World Cup, we've always lost to Namibia. How much of a psychological advantage was that to finally get that monkey off our back? Now, um, it was actually big for us as a team. But to be fair, I've never understood lo uh, losing to Namibia. I've never lost to Namibia before. I like that. I like so, that. Uh, you're a lucky charm, bro. You're a lucky yeah, charm. Because uh, I've never lost to Namibia. So obviously, that was, I could see how big it was for the team, especially people like Hilton, who've been in the system for, for quite a bit. So it was big for me, the, the fact that I, the coach Pete gave me the responsibility to start that game and to finish the game. So 
I think for me, I knew exactly what I needed to do for the people around me because I think that's what makes us the team that we are, the fact that we remain the team. And I think that's what gave us the win, the fact that we knew what we wanted to do and how big that you know, beating Namibia would be for us. And I think that helped us a lot going into that game, yeah. And um, in terms of trying to make it to Australia, what do you think you guys as a unit need to, to do to get to that, uh, to the promised land, if I can call it yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think like Kyle already said, I think we have the right people already. Um, all that we, ex we need to do exactly what we did at the Africa Cup, remain the team that we are, remain grounded, keep seeing the vision and like uh, buy into the vision that Coach Pete has for the team because it is a big vision and I think it's very, very much possible. But at the moment, we're exactly where we need to be and the games that we're playing are going to help us get to, to that place, yeah. Uh, speaking of the games that you're playing, obviously uh, UAE and South Korea, uh, that's going to be your first uh, international camps, hopefully, uh, for Zimbabwe. How much are you looking forward uh, to those uh, matchups, and how important is it for us to continue getting game time as we build up to the Africa Cup next year, which is the final qualification pathway, and just uh, making sure that you guys come together as a unit? I don't know. I'm very much looking forward to, you know, if I get the privilege and honour of donning the Sables jersey, that'll be a dream come true. You know, I had the privilege of playing for Australia. I only got the one cap there, but if I can get a couple for, Z for Zim, that'll be awesome. Um, I, and I also heard the rumour going around that if you're a zero to five capper in, in, in the team, you <laughs> yeah. have to carry Hilton's bags. And <laughs> so, so you're carrying Hilton's bags? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. Well, I mean, I mean, you were got, fire, I mean, got Aiden telling me that I'm going to carry his bags. So I'm going to get off that, get out of five <laughs> caps as quickly as possible. Yeah. How many are you on now, Eddie? I'm on like three now. Are you three? Yeah. So yeah. you're still carrying bags now? <laughs> yeah. 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 We're on bag duties. We're on bag duties yeah. and waterboy duties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, obviously, uh, UAE, South Korea, mm. uh, how excited are you for that? And I, like, I want you to also maybe just touch on what you think you can contribute to the team. Because okay. I think uh, over the last year, especially when you were graduating from the junior sables uh, to uh, the senior team, there's been a lot of talk in terms of people's expectations. Everybody's saying, so fast, you know, we can't catch him. Mm -hmm. But as a player, what do you want to be remembered for? I know it's still early days, yeah. still building a future, but what do you think you can contribute uh, to the Sabres and what do you want to be remembered for when you get to be an elephant like him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, first things first, I'm very excited for the games coming up. I think it's a different challenge and it's always good to like take in the different challenges that come with donning the Sabres jersey like I talked about. But I think... For me as a player, yeah, a lot of people know me for my speed and I appreciate that, but I feel like I bring a lot of energy to the team. And a lot of people that know me, uh, I'm not, I don't talk as much outside of the field, but I always try to shout as much as I can on the field. So I bring a lot of energy to the field and like the skills are there as well. Yeah, you know, I can pass the ball. So yeah, so there's a little more that I bring to the team. But yeah, currently I would like a lot of teams to know that I am fast, you yeah. know, that I'm going to try go around you. So obviously that's my strength and I feel like I, as long as I stick to that, I can always keep getting better, yeah. All right, uh, uh, Kyle, uh, Eddie, before we let you go, maybe just a message to, to the Zimbabwe rugby fans. I know you guys will be in action tomorrow against the Junior Sables in a sort of like a warm-up game, but just beyond that in terms of what... Uh, you, what kind of support you guys want from yeah. uh, rugby lovers in this country and everybody who's invested in the game and who loves this country? Yeah, uh, just just for me, like, well, like uh, my only experience is if I've arrived here two days ago and I've just, like I said before, this has been an unbelievable welcoming from the Zimbabwe community and the Zimbabwe rugby community. So the support's there and I want to continue for that. So hopefully we can do the job on the field for, for, for the supporters now. But... To, they just got to continue what they're doing there. They've been unbelievably supportive, you know, super welcoming. So, from from, from my from my personal stance, they've been uh, they've been amazing. And now it's just up for us boys to get the job done, and hopefully they can have something more to cheer about in a few years after the game. You know, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Eddie, yeah. Any message to the fans? I think for for as long as I've been in the Zim Sables setup, or even the Junior Sables setup, the fans have been amazing from the beginning. So I think the family that we have as the Zim Rugby community is incredible. So I think. That's exactly what we need for the game coming up, for the games to come, and the journey to the World Cup. So I think the fans have been amazing. I can't thank them enough. And hopefully they rally behind us as we go on this journey. Yeah. All right, Kyle, Eddie, thank you very much for joining us Thanks on Morning Rush. I uh, hope you guys can go back to the captain's run later today. All right, yeah, that's yeah. it. Correct, it's on yeah. today. And then, you know, the preparations for UAE, South Korea, Rugby yeah. Africa Cup. We'll be looking forward to backing and supporting you guys. And hopefully we'll make it to Definitely, Australia yeah. in yeah, yeah. 2027. So, yeah. Konapo, Konapo, Ipapo, Ipapo, Bazetian Prime, DSTV Channel 294. The place to be.